friends and welcome back to Random Librarian here on YouTube. So I had a whole other video planned for this series and I read like, let me just show you. So I had the books, right? And I was like, you know what, for this video, for this review, I am going to do a little like a little painting, a little, little paint with me. We'll make these little cute ornament thingamajigs and I'll voice over and it'll be great. And then I looked at the footage. And apparently I paint really close to my body, so there's like two minutes of me actually painting on the books. <laughs> and I've already sent off the actual copies that I've read, because I give away books that I've read on Instagram and just send them anywhere in the United States. And uh, so I don't have any props other than these teeny tiny little book ornaments. But I really like making, so if you want one, let me know, and I will make one and send it to you. They're just little salto things. They're cute. I like them. Uh, I think if I were to do these again, I have like a different plan of attack, but I still had fun doing it. So this is the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black, in case they're too small for anyone to tell. <laughs> so we have... Uh, the Cruel Prince, which I think is the one that gets uh, the most hype, the book title that most people know. I kind of thought that that was the name of the series until I was doing a little bit of research about it. Then we have The Wicked King. There you go. And then we have The Queen of Nothing. So it's a trilogy and then there's also I think a standalone that's within the same universe, but I haven't read that one. And then I think there's a different series that's also within the same universe, and I haven't read that one. So I'm just talking about this trilogy. That's all I got. On the backs, I did add little, little uh, text from what is said on the backs of the actual books. So the first one, The Cruel Prince, it says, Harden Your Heart. On The Wicked King, it says strike again without tiring because Jude is very violent <laughs> in a great way. And then we have He Will Be the Destruction on The Queen of Nothing. And there's a wee little crown at the bottom. Hopefully all of that was in, in frame and uh, in focus. <laughs> I'm so nervous now so I was just like... I thought I was really doing something, and uh, apparently not. Anyways, so I guess general thoughts for the whole series. I really like the idea of, you know, telling fae stories where they're scary, because I feel like there has been such a huge wave of romance novels that feature fae. And those are not the fae that my Irish ancestors were scared shitless about. You know, they're not. Like, they're pretty, sure. But, like, you shouldn't fall in love with them. <laughs> they're gonna mess you up. And in this series, the fae mess you up. If you are human, you are in danger. It opens, it opens with a brutal double murder and then kidnapping of three children. So, like... It's not Sarah J. Mass, and I think that that is great. On the other hand, I wish that there was more details in the world building. These are very short, very quick, very snappy books. You'll get through them extremely quickly. So if you need to get out of a reading slump, like, pick them up. They're great for that. <laughs> but the world doesn't feel very rich to me. Everything felt kind of, this is what we're presenting. Good luck like digging into it on your own because we're not telling you why things are the way they are. So here's the thing, I have an undergraduate minor from my days in college in Irish studies. So I'm familiar with a lot of like the lore behind Faye and the crazy stuff that can happen in the real world when people think that someone is a changeling. Read the book The Burning of Bridget Cleary. Oh my god, that book. It's 
nonfiction, and it's about a woman who was essentially murdered by her family because they thought that a f they claimed to have thought that a fairy came and took her place. So like, there's a lot of brutal stories and and brutal mythology behind this. But the mythology and like the spoken, passed down through the generation stories have more meat to them than fairyland, which is where we are in these books. <laughs> and like you get you get the gist of it and you get through it and like a story is told, but I wanted I wanted more. That's kind of that's kind of where it, where it boils down to. My main gripe with this series, like my main issue with this series, is the romance. And I, I sadly I feel like that is often my main issue with something. But in this case, it's it's a lot. So in book one, when I was painting it, I really considered trying to get. Um, Carton's handwriting and just have the Jude written like 15,000 times on the inside, but that feels like it would give me like carpal tunnel, so I didn't. I was talking about this on TikTok because Carton, through the whole, like in the first book especially, but really through the whole thing, is a bully. Like there's no really other way to put it. He only doesn't kill Jude the person he ends up married to because of sheer dumb luck. Like there's no, he wasn't protecting her. He was putting her in dangerous situations where she could die because she's mortal and he's fae. And I was complaining about that because I feel like that is a huge power imbalance and it can't really be enemies to lovers if one of the lovers has all of the power and uses it to like really almost kill somebody and the other party is reacting and trying to stay alive. Like, I don't think that that is enemies to lovers. That is like, oh, you bullied me and somehow I survived. And so I guess we are in love now. Like, it's just, it's not the same thing. And someone commented on my TikTok about that and was like, what did you think enemies to lovers meant? And I was like, no, 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 no. I know I'm new to this genre, but enemies to lovers in my book, and the example that I'm pulling from right now is um, the one with mermaids, like a little mermaid retelling, but everyone wants to kill everybody. In that kind of situation, both of the enemies are on the same level when they start out. So in that mermaid book, we've got a prince who wants to kill mermaids, and we've got a mermaid princess who wants to kill princes. And in that situation, we have two people who are prepared to do the murdering, and like raised to do the murdering, and have like the same ability to do the murdering, and then they fall in love. In this situation, we don't have that. We have a huge disparity in power structure. Also, he has more people on his side because her side is not powerful enough to protect her. So it's not like it's two warring kingdoms. It is a bully punching down, you know? That's kind of where I'm coming from. And simultaneously, we're like, they're starting off in like real, like I hate each other, but also like, Somehow she never stops finding him attractive even though he's trying to kill her or like accidentally almost killing her. I will never understand that. I am so sorry. I completely lost the thread of what I was saying there. But anyways, despite them wanting to have nothing to do with one another beyond like besting each other or possibly murdering each other, their romance happens so fast, like way too fast. Surely there should be more buildup, especially because she's like kind of holding him hostage in book two and then she gets held hostage in book two by another power and then he banishes her and then she doesn't realize that he didn't actually banish her because she's a queen and could have undone that at any point. And somehow they're like in love enough 
that she considers keeping him as a giant snake forever so that she won't have to be alone. When through all of this, I feel like they've spent a grand total of like an hour together and alone. It, it doesn't make sense to me, like at all. Like at all at all. <sighs> Anyways, um, other things that I liked was that because she's human, Jude is able to lie and that is a huge skill and it makes her a uh, spy, which is super fun because she gets to like use the fact that people overlook her because she's human and use the fact that she's able to trick people because she's human and like flip that entire situation on its head. There were twists and turns I didn't see coming that were very entertaining. Like I liked this series. I liked this series despite what my rant might be saying, but I was just very frustrated by the romance and also by the fact that like fairy things would happen and they'd be like really cool things and then we'd get nothing else about it. And I was like, what? I want more about that. Like when she's in book three, in book three, when Jude is pretending to be Taryn and gets kidnapped by their murderous adoptive father it's also just like very convoluted to explain, even though it's like pretty simple as a, as a book while you're reading it. So she's at the camp and as she's trying to escape, said murderous adoptive father almost kills her. And then the earth heals her because she's the queen. Like I wanted so much more of that, of the magic system and how it works and how its allegiance is decided and it, magic that's all I wanted I didn't really care about the romance which like didn't actually take up that much time it was just like what you know <laughs> Oof. okay well uh this video is all over the place but I wanted more magic I wanted more fairy uh backstory stuff definitely wanted more build up for the romance still had a lot of fun with this series. A friend of mine read it before I did and was like, you can't read this review if you ever want to read these books and you should want to read these books. So I was like, okay, I'm reading these books. And I'm glad I did. They're very quick. They're like great for getting people out of reading slumps, which I think I said at the beginning. But at the same time, I was just like, oh, I got some, I got some gripes. I got some issues with this. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on, uh, the Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and Queen of Nothing. This book series did encourage me to buy a crown off of the internet because there's a crown on all three of the title, on um, all three of the covers. One of it's broken. It's very dramatic. Oh, that's also something that really should have been fleshed out more. There's a prophecy about Cardin. And like, as much as I hated the romance thing because it really wasn't fleshed out enough for me, I do see why they fit. Which is also kind of why it's frustrating for me because they have complementary backstories. Because Jude was kidnapped as a young child by her parents' murderers. Cardin was kind of had because it gave his mom standing in the court because she was one of the lovers of the, the High King. And then this, this prophecy happens and basically says he's going to be the undoing of fairy. All of it. Everything's gonna die. Like, no more kings and queens. The crown as it is, is no longer going to be what binds the land kind of thing. And it's very doom and gloom. And then as a result, he gets no love, no affection, no one takes care of him, except for when he does something cruel and his mom finds it funny, and that's kind of why he becomes that way. But that feels kind of ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. It's just so extreme. It's so extreme. And then he somehow falls in love with Jude without having any kind of like good conversation with her. And they're both just like very ashamed of the fact that they like one another, which isn't explored enough. Like that is something that was very interesting because like 
surely, surely that should be a big thing. If you're going to be an enemies to lovers thing, you have to be kind of like confused about your own emotions. So they definitely have compatibility, but that's not explored. They hate each other one second, they hook up, he banishes her. When they come back together, he's acting like they had a big moment and like spoke their words of love, which they don't do until like the way end of the series. I don't know. <laughs> that was probably like not a popular opinion when it comes to um, this series, but I would love to hear your opinions about this series. I don't really have a way to wrap up all of these thoughts. They've just kind of been marinating in my brain since I finished the series and while I was painting these little thingamajigs. So um, <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them down in the comments below. And like I said, if anyone wants these, I'd be happy to send them your way. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you soon. Happy reading in the meantime.